In this video, I'm going to share with you 21 simple things that you can do to make being a new father easier in your life that I used and discovered the hard way. It's going to be easier for you. Welcome to my channel. I'm Nicholas Bailey, and I'm actually a new father right now. My son's almost three weeks old, and I have 21 things that are going to be absolutely phenomenal for you, especially if you're a high performer, maybe an entrepreneur. You're not just going clocking into the regular nine to five, living the regular white picket fence style life, but if you have not yet yet subscribe to this channel you're going to want to go do that right now by just clicking that red button that says subscribe so that we can stay connected and make sure to drop a comment below at the end of this video letting me know like what's your life like as a new father old father soon to be father i want to know all about who you are but let's jump into the 21 things Now these are in no particular order. I'm gonna have some stories around it, but my life wasn't always this way, by the way. Like going back to 18, 19 years old, I was just a broke kid. I used to literally go through grocery stores and I would walk around just waiting for someone to buy me food because I was that broke. I had no money in my bank account. I even, I was 60 pounds overweight, finally lost the weight, went out there, got a girlfriend, got married, had no job. And that's when I was like, I need to go figure out how I can go out there and start a business. I went out there to go to try to start a business and I absolutely failed. I had to go clean carpets for two and a half years and through hundreds of thousands of dollars of investments, phenomenal mentors. I've been able to build a business that my wife and I were seven years into our marriage before we ever got pregnant. So our life is a lot different now than it was then. So I'm gonna be sharing with, through my perspective and kind of twist it to any perspective as well. The first thing is to plan for the best, yet prepare for the worst. Going into the very beginning of, of having a child, the first couple weeks, maybe the first couple months for you, it, it seems like you, you don't wanna to go to the negative and be like, this is gonna be so hard, this is gonna be so bad, this can be so terrible but you also don't wanna just plan for it to be amazing and always miss your expectations. So I'd plan for the best, like plan for it to be amazing, yet prepare for the worst. So at nighttime, prepare for things to be hard, for diaper changes, prepare for them to be hard so that no matter what, you're keeping this even keel so that you're not being disappointed, but you're also not being pessimistic. Number two, it's a common question that we ask ourselves, which is, can I actually do this? And the answer is yes, you've been built to do this. I have the same exact questions. Everyone that I've ever met has had those same exact questions. And I think just knowing that other people go through the same things and it's almost like the test to see like, are you man enough to get through this test and realize, yes, that you can do this as well. Number three is that this is just a season and each one of them has an end time. So they say like for the first two weeks of your child being born, he'll eat like every single two hours or he or she will eat every single two hours on the dot. So for my wife and I, like this was super difficult because we literally went to the hospital after not sleeping for multiple days. My wife is in labor for almost 30 hours. She finally falls asleep for like 20 minutes and I was like, hey honey, I need to wake you up. You need to feed him. And we were doing breastfeeding so it was like, it was super overwhelming at first. Like are we ever gonna sleep and get our sleep back ever, ever, ever again? And it just seemed super disillusional, like three, four, five days of no sleep. And then all of a sudden, like a week later, we started catching up on our sleep and getting into a better routine. So commonly as humans, we just go to the extreme that this is gonna be this way forever, and how can I ever live this way and we get in this fight or flight. Know that each part is just a season. It's a season that they're gonna be in newborn diapers. It's a season that they're gonna be in size one diapers. It's a season that they're gonna be even breastfeeding. Like everything is a season, and so be present and enjoy that season for what it is so you get the most out of it because there's always something to complain about in every single season. Find the things that you could also celebrate as well. This was a huge breakthrough number four Four, which is be grateful for what you have until you pray for what you hate. This was a huge thing that I learned so far from my son because right when he came out of, of the womb, he pooped four times in the first day. And I had never changed diapers before. So I'm like learning how to change diapers. He's screaming during it. And I'm like, man, like you pooping a lot. And I started like getting almost uh, frustrated at this thing that he was pooping. And then all of a sudden we came home from the hospital and he went like a day and a half without pooping. And I was freaking out, right? I was ungrateful for the fact that he was pooping. And then all of a sudden I came home and I was like praying for him to poop. And so it's just like, man, be grateful for what you do have and the things that are happening because you would never want the alternative. The alternative of him pooping a lot is not pooping. And when I got not pooping, I started praying for him to do the very thing that I was just complaining about. So be grateful in all these things. If he pees on you, if he pees a lot, if he sleeps a lot, if he's up, like anything that he's doing or she's doing, be grateful for every moment 
so that you don't get to a point where you're praying for the moment that you once were upset about. Number five is don't do what's comfortable for them, do what's best for them. One of the things right now is that like, I just wanna keep them up and play with them and, and have them with me the entire time. Yet I wanna make sure that just as when I'm coaching men, I wanna make sure that no matter what, I'm doing what's best for him, not doing what's comfortable for him. We can easily teach our kids really bad habits and it's been shown over time. Like obviously not spending time with their kids is not a good habit to have. Like spending time with their kids is really good. Yeah, one of the things that we did is we've put our kid on a schedule, and so Kingston's on a schedule right now that during the day typically eats every two hours right now, and then uh, let's say that he is lazy during his feeding or doesn't sleep a lot afterwards. We put him down for a nap afterwards. He sleeps. We wake him up. We feed him, and it's on clockwork. If he's lazy and he's like begging for food, typically like we won't feed him right then unless like it goes with our guidelines. And again, this is something that's proven. I'm not the total expert, but we have him on a schedule, and the easy thing is just to feed him whenever he wants try to make him not cry and it's like because it's so much easier you feel like a bad parent if your kid's crying yet the biggest thing for me is like I want to make sure I'm doing what's best for him to have him grow and learn how to self-soothe self-soothing is something like if your baby can only fall asleep on you well then he doesn't know how to, or she doesn't know how to fall asleep without you and so if you don't teach your kid how to fall asleep and self-soothe and, and soothe themselves rather than you soothing them, then they're gonna grow up with different issues. And so for us, like that takes him crying every once in a while, and then he kind of puts himself to sleep, and now he's learning how to actually put himself to sleep rather than having us having to bounce him around and do all this other stuff. It's a lot harder that way, but doing what's best for the child rather than what's easy and comfortable for us and what feels good. Number six is being on the same page with your spouse or significant other. Doesn't matter what it is, like from a home birth to hospital birth to coming home and the schedules and putting, putting the kid down. Are they gonna sleep in the room, in the crib, in the bed? No matter what, be on the same page as your spouse or significant other. Eight, don't feel the pressure of the outside sources of people, people wanting to come by, people wanting to see the kid, people wanting to hold the kid, touch the kid, whatever. Just have the family unit, have the people around you that support you, but don't feel the pressure from outside people. This is your time to connect with your kid. Number nine is all the things you've been trying to do to prepare for everything and, and have everything perfect, the house clean, the room clean, the laundry, all these things, all the things bought. Like not a lot of that matters. You know, the kid needs a place to sleep. The kid needs diapers. The kid needs a boob. The kid needs wipes. And then that's if you're breastfeeding, which I highly recommend based on our research and you do your own research. Yet there's all this stuff, like the extra things that we did. It wasn't as big as we thought. So just realize that, man, just get the things that matter the most and the time that you can spend with them and the love that you give them is the number one thing. Number 10, it takes more wipes and diapers than you think. And I'm just gonna leave that one there. Number 11 is seek community and help and, and make sure to keep up on your self-care. So community, like get around other people that are like-minded. Help, people that are asking to help, accept it. Family, friends, and let them know beforehand, like you're gonna need some freaking help. And keep your self-care up. That's like grooming, like taking care of yourself, taking showers, making sure you're eating healthy, making sure you're getting food, going and getting a workout, even if it's a home workout, no matter what it is, keep your self-care up because if you're not taking care of yourself, it's really difficult to take care of others. Number 12, one of the big lifesavers for us has been Instacart. Instacart's something that I'll actually just throw a link down below and you can sign up for it. And basically what you can do is have people shop for you at surrounding stores that they uh, accept and see if you have a store that works for you. And basically you can either drive there and pick it up and they'll load it into your car and that's 100% free if you just pay for this membership or you can actually have them deliver where you just pay a tip. So you pay that fee up front, whether it's monthly, I think it's $10 a month or $120 for the year, which is ridiculous, like really freaking good. And you can either have someone shop for you and put it in your car, or you can have them deliver it to your house. It's just a lifesaver because you're gonna end up spending more money eating out if you're not prepared. Number 13 was buy water bottles and put them everywhere. Put them in your room, put them in the living room, put them wherever, every single place because staying hydrated and the wife staying hydrated uh, or you staying hydrated matters so much. You just wanna make it very simple and it's a small investment to have those things all around the house. Number 14 is if you haven't really prepared to hold a baby, wipe a baby, change a baby, whatever it is, feed a baby, burp a baby, hold, like all these things, don't worry, it comes pretty quick. Like I didn't really like holding other people's babies. I didn't want the liability. I didn't change other diapers. I didn't do any of that. But real quick, especially like for me, my wife wasn't able to just like change the baby afterwards because she had a stage three tear and she was pretty much in bed and I was walking her to the bathroom. 
back to bed uh, for the first seven days. So I got to change, like I got to put in like 100 reps. Now I'm like a freaking pro at changing a diaper, burping the baby. It just comes natural. Just put in the time. You can learn about it. You can watch YouTube videos about it. That's cool. Yet don't freak out about it as much as I did. Number 15 is don't be afraid of stepping up as a man, taking over things like changing a diaper, burping the baby, making sure the baby gets put down, picked up, anything like that, taking a bath. Don't look at what other people have done in the past. You can see that didn't work that well. There's lots of people in this generation that don't really like their fathers, don't think they did a really good job, don't have a great connection with them, probably because all they did is just was disconnected, allowed the women to do everything. The man just went to work and you barely even knew your dad. So just know that like whatever instinctually happens for you or whoever you look up to, don't be afraid to jump up. Like for me, I like being a part of all of it. Now, what's the ROI of that? Like, I don't know what the, what the outcome of that's gonna be in the future, yet I'm not afraid to jump up and I don't think you should be either. It's been really fun and rewarding and really a big connection between my wife and I. Number 16 is get the newborn photos. One of my mentors, Russell Brunson, he runs a $100 million software company called ClickFunnels. I'll throw that below as well, you can check it out. He said the number one thing he regrets, number one thing, is not doing enough family photos. So right off the bat, we did the newborn photos. So awesome because they change so quickly in a short amount of time. Number 17 is make sure that you prepare to take time off or if you can like even if right now you're you're already in it like work to be able to take time to be able to invest like in the family. For me I worked very very hard to be able to take two three weeks a month off and again or go part time do something where you can intentionally give time. Now realize that time there doesn't mean that it's time present. So invest your time with presence meaning that you're there fully with the family that's more important than anything. Number 18, plan to be inside a lot. I don't, it's like, I don't even wanna go outside that much. Like it's so much of a hassle to go to all these different places. So right now, actually, he's almost three weeks old. And at three weeks old, we're going out to our friend's house for the first time. Other than that, we've been to grandma and grandpa's house. We've been to a cafe, yet we've been out inside the majority of the time. So plan on that, which means maybe take a vitamin D supplement as well. Cause you may not be out, outside that much, especially after your wife gives birth, like she's not gonna be yet working out running outside right away most likely. So allow her to have time to recover, encourage her. And I think that's one that I haven't put in here was that like pull out all your encouraging words and pull out every single one of them, pull out all the stops, go 10X on all of them for your baby and your relationship. It'll never fail you. Number 19 is get someone to cook for you or get prepared meals. For me, I have an assistant. I have her come over and cook every Monday and clean up every Friday and she cleans on Monday as well. She comes in and helps out around here to make sure that we're cooking all of our food, we're eating our food, but if not, you can get frozen stuff, you get prepared meals, you can have friends help you prepare meals, have things prepared so that you can stay nourished and your relationship can stay nourished, your family can stay nourished because the baby gets the nutrients that the wife is eating. 20, embrace all the emotions and all the different changes. Like you're gonna have so many emotions that go on. Feelings like when uh, when Kingston was just born, for the first three days, I didn't even know if I ever wanted to work again. I had like no motivation for anything. Then all of a sudden after a few days went by, I started feeling this hunger to go out there and build something bigger than I ever did before. I went out there and crushed it on that second week that I wasn't even supposed to work. So. Don't beat yourself up based on these feelings and emotions. Take them for what they are. Enjoy them because you may not be able to ever experience them again. It's really cool. And number 21, the last one, is don't allow all the medical field people out there to tell you what you should do with your kid. Stay educated. For us, we did an at-home birth that ended up going to a hospital at the very end. You could probably check out my wife's YouTube video about our birth story. Super intense, yet it worked out absolutely perfect. And we did that for a reason. Afterwards, like we denied certain things. We went there with a, a birth plan. Afterwards, when we went and got a pediatrician, we went to a specific pediatrician that wasn't gonna be able, pushing vaccines. Like we didn't want all these vaccinations. We didn't want the, the majority of it. If we did get them, we want them dripped and we wanted our way. And the reason we could say that is because we went out there and got educated. There's certain things that I believe you should listen to experts on. And no matter what, getting educated is listening to an expert, yet you don't wanna just give your life over to other people. So many people show up to the hospital, show up to the pediatrician, and they just get played like a little rag doll, like they're, they're like, you know, propped up on a stick and like they don't make any of their own decisions. Go out there, get educated, make your own decisions because this is your family and your life and your legacy that you're living. It's very, very important. So you're gonna wanna go out there and do that. 
Again, these are 21 things that you can implement right away as a new father. I was like going through them, I was gonna tell more stories and stuff like that, but I wanted to keep it straight to the point. 21 things that you guys can implement. And again, make sure to subscribe to this channel, Nicholas Barely, and leave me a comment below letting me know if you're a new dad, an expecting dad, what, uh, how many kids you have, the age, I wanna know more about you down in the comments. Would love to be able to connect and hear all about what you're all about as well. Thanks so much again, talk to you soon.